So next up, we're going to talk about the Collector Vision Phoenix FPGA ColecoVision console Kickstarter. Or we did talk about it already at PRGE. That's right. We're going to go back in time once more. Go back in time. So Ian, there's another FPGA console here. Now it's on Kickstarter. It's the Collector Vision Phoenix and FPGA ColecoVision console. This this was this was like literally the day or two after the last podcast that this came out. So it's an FPGA ColecoVision. Uh, it exists. The prototype's out here. I first saw the prototype uh, at Games 31's convention, who's a part of Collector Vision at Game On Expo. So this is a real thing. They have a prototype, hence why it can be on Kickstarter. So that's good. So there's 218 backers. Two and a half weeks ago, 50 almost $57,000. Uh, for this project here as my wheel mouse. So there it is. There's the prototype there, functional prototype in a 3D printed case. Final will have an injection. I didn't realize injectable. it was going to be so small. That's crazy. FPGAs are cute and small. Well, they, I, yeah, they, they, are, they are. So, it, so you can use, uh, you know, you can use your regular ColecoVision controller. I think you can use a Sega Genesis with the same port, I think. Um, I think you can, right? Can you do that? Click, but then you need the buttons, though, anyway. Yeah, to you play, need the play, play, like, mouse trap and stuff. You got the same port as uh, the NES controller. Oh, there's, there's NES controller ports? Okay. Well, there you go. So, see, look at the size. It's like it's like a quarter of the size. That's adorable. And ColecoVision is my favorite pre-NES console. Actually. I love the ColecoVision. ColecoVision's adorable. It's adorable. Compa region free, 100% accurate, all ColecoVision games, HDMI output, digital audio out, special features, video enhanced compatibility built in. See, I'm not, I don't know all about this stuff, about like the opcode, a, a SGM stuff. I just know that like, un unleashes the full power of the clickable vision you can do slightly more modern games so i've seen like a a, a video of like ripping off a shirt yes clickable vision is like i'm here baby <laughs> i i did see like a gradius version on uh clickable vision and it looked respectable like it's not the nes one but it's closer i think clickable vision you're always going to be sort of that in between atari 2600 and nes but it gets it and nudges it a little bit closer it's not as awesome as the 5200 but the clico vision's got some pectorals <laughs> yeah sure I'm doing their push-ups so uh you have sd card from our update sd card slot which means you buy a little rounds in this in the sucker eventually original super nintendo port there you go oh there's built-in games that I did not oh, know. So you get the Collector Vision Phoenix video game system. You get the City Hunter and the Caverns of Death, exclusive pack and game cards with a big dollar value, and 10 homebrew games at a $150 value. I don't know much about uh, the Collector Vision homebrew scene. I'm, I'm assuming these are fun games. Uh, Chess uh, Challenge, sure. Princess Quest looks like a Zelda 2 sort of side scroller here. Zombie Near and a few others. Tank Mission. Not combat. combat. Honestly, I, with the ColecoVision, I like the games that have come out or that that were released for it. Uh, but the homebrew scene is something that I haven't touched with ColecoVision, and it's what interests me, I think, the most about it right now. So this is going to cost you a hundred ninety-nine dollars plus shipping, just for the uh, Phoenix, and then two hundred nine if you get a controller with with a Super Nintendo controller, and then it goes up from there, adding in a complete box, Caverns of Death. A limited, limited edition uh, color edition for Adam, so that would probably be a white one, I guess. Calling. So here's the thing, Ian. This is a cool concept, obviously. It exists. This isn't like the chameleon. This is a real product. <laughs> Someone yeah. developed the FPGA. Uh, the assholes that currently own the Coleco license are involved with this, so that's a positive to me. Right. Right. So they're 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 pieces of trash. So the issue, though, is the fact that. The, the end goal, though, is very high. It's $230,000. Sure. And at $200 a system, it's unsure if this is going to hit the goal. If you've gone to my head, I'd say this would not hit the goal. So it's, it's looking tough. A lot, of, uh, a lot of Kickstarters can rally at the end. I've seen plenty of them do it. Um, but I would imagine that there's probably a contingency plan here. I would hope. Yes, I, I have heard. I know a source close to this it says that really? there is a contingency plan. So hmm. this will come out one form or another. It should come out. There should be a solution to this. I think, though, what we're getting at, though, is the viability of these sort of upgraded modern ways to play old games that it really, in a, in a sharp way, shows you the limited reach of some of these consoles 35 years later. Right. So ColecoVision sold a, a decent amount back then uh, of systems, not as much as the Atari 2600, obviously, but it wasn't like, 
even like the Vectrex, which you know barely got off the ground, was gone in like two years. Click, uh, you know, ClickaVision did okay for itself, but 35 years later, who out here is still playing these games, and who here wants to invest 200 plus to play it on a modern TV? Those are entirely different questions. Right. And this really gets to the heart of that. What are what's the size of these audiences for these more niche systems. This isn't the Genesis, this isn't the NES, this isn't the Super Nintendo. This is the Coleco Vision. I mean, there's people, most people in this room were not alive when this was released. You know, you have to be at least 35 years old to have been around, so. Yeah, I love the Coleco Vision system. So do I, I love I'm it. glad that this is happening. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting juxtaposition to see this happening at the same time that, say, the, um, the Mega SG is happening. Um, and it could be the fact that there's too many of these being released at one time with the you know, Poly Mega, the uh, Mega SG, I got it right, and the, the Phoenix, it's, maybe it's too much hitting within like a month, month and a half, when people are like, oh my God, oh my God, if they were spaced out more, uh, but again. What I do think is cool though, is when you look back at say, the popularity of the Atari 2600, um, and stuff like that. I think it's neat that the ColecoVision has a passionate enough fan base that as far as I know, this is the first truly dedicated FPGA system for a specific Pre NES? Pre NES. Oh, system. sure. I think so. I mean, there's plenty of. Uh, I think Camtrus has developed cores. Yeah, oh, there's cores for all those, but not the system. You know, nothing has come up, you know, specifically like this. And this isn't Camtrus, by the way. I think this is, I think it's Brian on here. I think that's yes. the guy's doing it. Okay. So, anyways, yeah, I, I, I like that. I think it's it's cool that there's a passionate enough fan base for the system, though, that they're doing it. But, but 218 for this Kickstarter hit its goal. Pat Math, you need. Pat math is not very good math. <laughs> what, 1,200 people to, to back this at $200 each, right? Is that about right? What was the calculator on? But let's just say 1,200 people. And so that's six times the amount of people that are currently backing it. So that's tough. I think you need some heavy promotion to, for people to be aware of this, but I don't know how you find those people that would, maybe, maybe, maybe the people that bought the ColecoVision, you know, all-in-ones that came out like, you know, what, eight, nine years ago? Maybe some people like that would still be interested, but that's but they bought that all in one, they might be satisfied by it. You know what I mean? So what audience is there for this besides this 218 people? We'll see. Like I said, this should exist in a form that we could buy, but it, again, it comes down to the size of the market. Like, what if I did a Fairchild Channel F at PGA? It'd be awesome. Ian might buy it, but you might have 20 people in the back of it. So just what are the size of these? I think audiences? you're comparing apples and bowling balls, huh? Well, I'm just telling you though, that it's just the scale, the degree though. So this is a, not fair child, it's one up from that, but that's not enough for a Kickstarter though. That's what I'm saying. I'll scratch you again. And scene. And we're back in the saddle again. We are back in time. Great points made about the, uh, the uh, Kickstarter. There's a couple more weeks left, check it out. Pat, and, you uh, look especially handsome there. I, I did I? Yeah, it was good. Okay.